Ambo Pin Stars and Strikes is brought to you by the Thompson family of dealerships in Nashua, New Hampshire, and by Tri-State Megabucks and the New Hampshire State Lottery, helping New Hampshire schools one ticket at a time. Hello again, everybody, and welcome in to another edition of Candlepin Stars and Strikes from Lita Lanes in Nashua, New Hampshire. Dick Lutz with Mike Morin. It is week two of our final ladder series of the season. Last week, we saw some terrific bowling by Chris Capozzi. He started strong, Dick, out of the box. And for a guy who had only been on television his second time, he really fielded the heat very well under the hot lights and up against the great icon, Mike Morgan, and just breezed right by. Chris defeated Mike Morgan 426 to 365, setting up this afternoon's match against our number three seed, Mike Yao of Londonderry. Let's meet our bowlers. Last week's winner, our number five seed from Everett, Massachusetts. Welcome back, Chris Capozzi. Chris coming in with an average of 120. His high single, 194, high triple, 444, and bowls at Central Park Lanes in East Boston. He here he bowls a 657 in the roll-off to earn the number five seed, and he'll be taking on our number three seed with a 665 in the roll-off from Londonderry, New Hampshire. Welcome, Mike Yao. First time on TV, average 117. High single 213, which, by the way, is a Lita Lane's house record. So there's a little extra notch in his belt. High triple is 459, and yes, he is a hometown favorite, does his bowling here at Lita Lane. So it'll be Chris Capozzi and Mike Yao. Let's get right to it. We're coming back to Lita Lane's for Candlepin Stars and Strikes right after this. There you see the five bowlers that we began our ladder series last week. Chris Capozzi defeating Mike Morgan, 426 to 365, setting up this week's match with Mike Yao. The opposition, Mark Gregory and Bobby Betancourt waiting in the wings, and it'll be Chris Capozzi, first to bowl here this afternoon at Lita Lanes. As we continue Candlepin Stars and Strikes, week two, ladder series number six, looking for our sixth participant in the Tournament of Champions at the end of the year. Chris Capozzi starts us off. Missed the head pin. We talked last week about he locked on to the head pin during the course of the match. And first ball here today, he is off the head pin. That time he chops right through. Chris is 48 years old, an assistant analyst at Mellon Bank in Everett, working the third shift, monitoring the bank's computer systems. He's been working the third shift for over 20 years and loves it. He and Donna have been married for 14 years. They have a daughter, Anna, who's nine. He has a stepson, Sean, 19, a freshman at Suffolk University. Likes that third shift. It gives him time to spend with daughter, Anna. He is also a, a mentor, Dick, at one of the schools in Everett, spending time with the uh, kids in, uh, I believe, the first couple of grades because he just enjoys working with kids, watching the progress they make, give them a good example. So he is very actively involved in this community. Will he make it? Not quite enough of an angle. So open in the first two frames. Want to welcome New England Ford dealers to our telecast as a new participating sponsor of Candlepin Stars and Strikes. We're happy to have them join us. New England Ford dealers, now one of the participating sponsors of Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Here's Mike Yao making his television debut from Londonderry. Spread eagle right on the right on the head pin and right straight through. Will he make it almost? Wouldn't that have been a great shot wow. to start off your <laughs> first TV appearance? Mike's 48 years old. He starts off with a 10 box. These guys are only about uh, six week of, uh, weeks apart in age. Uh, Mike Yao's birthday is the 31st of January, 57, and Chris Capozzi's birthday was yesterday, the 19th of 1957. Another, another ball right on the head pin, straight on. Tough shot here, the 3-7-10, with some wood to help him out. Mike's only appearance on television was the old Candlepin for Cash show with Bob Gumier way back on the old Channel 7. There's a great spare from Mike Yao. He bowled a nine box. Canopin for cash, if you remember the format, I, I remember it vaguely, was uh, just running people through. They'd bowl one box, one ball, 
and try to win some cash for people at home. They'd list off all their friends at home and move on through and bring everybody <laughs> yes. in. It was really a fast-paced show. They had a similar show in Detroit where I grew up. It was 10th of course. It was called Bowling for Dollars. Same thing. Say hi to everybody you've ever met in your life yeah. and throw your eight box and go home. It developed a cult following. It did. All right. Come on now. Chris with a spread eagle and then picking off the two pins, so still five pins standing. And that's a good eight box for Chris. 426 last week, he was on fire. Strings of 131, 143, and 152 kept getting progressively better as the match wore on. Picked up $225 in total bonus money. A little that different this off, week. Off the head pin. He hit the head pin that time, but no break. Man. He could do no wrong last week, and so far this week, nothing's gone right for him. Chris also appeared on a junior bowling show back when he was a kid. Now he gave that a good shot, didn't he? But about the only way he could. Well, it's funny, Dick, talking about the old shows. Uh, one of our uh, fans here today gave me a book. It's actually a magazine from June of 1979. Candleton Bowling is what it's called. A magazine, and in the very back is an ad for the old Bay State Bowling Show, and there's your friend. There's Bob Foraker. Bob Foraker. Say that he's going to be joining us next month. We were hoping to have him here this week. He couldn't make it uh, because Holy Cross is still alive in the Patriot League tournament. Tape. There's a strike for Mike Yao that goes inside the spare. But he's promised me that he will be here for our Tournament of Champions and spend some time with us. The picture, picture of Bob Foraker and Dave Adams. <laughs> and Bay State Bowling. And their late 70s close. Oh, there's another strike from Mike Yao. Don't turn your head on Mike. He's on fire. Three marks in a row, $50 in bonus money already. <laughs> and he'll be looking for the triple strike jackpot, 25. which has $525 in it. Chris Sargent hit it last week, so it's been reset again to $500. Come on, Chris. Get out, Chris. Right on the head pin, gave it a shot. That would have gone last week for him. So he's 0 for 5 thus far. And he From is being getting red hot to killed. being ice cold. And he'll take a 10 box. Mike Yao has opened up an early advantage. So that magazine lists a whole bunch of uh, bowling centers that were participating. And how many of them are out of business now? You know, Gate City Bowl and Nashville, that's not there. Half Worcester for Chris. Mike wants, <laughs> Chris Capozzi signals timeout. <laughs> he wanted to call a halt to the proceedings. 30 second timeout, regather his thoughts. That's right on the head pin, good shot. Oh, he played it perfectly. No luck, no luck. nice ball. Actually, he's open through six. Surprisingly, a lot of these bowling centers are still around. Are still around. These are the New Hampshire Candleton Bowling Association houses from back in 1979, including Botwells, of course, which is still there. Uh, Bowlerway Lanes, the Edgerly family in Rochester. Uh, Bowlerama Portsmouth, the Genomatis family, of course, running that. Gate City is no longer there in Nashua. King Lanes, of course, is there in Manchester. Sandy's, which is now Park Place in Windham. So. A lot of the bowling centers in the NHCBA back in 1979 are still happily uh, in business. So thanks to our viewer who brought this along today to show us some old bowling magazine publications. Oh, another great shot. He missed the triple strike, but he's got a spare in it. And 84 through five plus whatever he gets on the spare shot here. He is on fire. He has $75 in bonus money. Trying to get that seven pin to fall. He's got the two, seven, 10. And how about that, a 91 half, your first time on TV since when he was a kid, of course. Now, nope. the ball comes back, it's in play, but he will be open in the sixth frame. It is a nine box, and even 100 through six 
a 47 pin lead. Is that correct? 48 pin lead. 47 pin lead. There's a scoring error somewhere there, Michael. We'll figure it out, Dick. We'll, we'll crunch the numbers, figure it out. All right, Chris. You gave him an eight in the uh, fourth frame when he had a nine. Chris Capozzi. There you go, nine right there. There's a good shot for Chris Capozzi. His first mark. My apologies to Mr. Capozzi for shortchanging him by a pin. We've got to keep our eyes on you all the time. That score sheet. Uh, he got, that one got away from him, but he got a break going into the second pocket. Right, got a break, Put seven Chris. in the spare. And needs the one, two, four for another mark. Got a shot at it, and he's got it. Two marks in a row for Chris Capozzi as he breaks out of the doldrums. We're going to get to some of the emails and cards and letters that we've received during the course of the match, beginning at the start of the second string. Mike Yao is right on the head pin, isn't he? Tough break here, though. The 5-7-8. Tough shot. Got to use the wood. Absolutely. Take your chances. Where do you hit a dick uh, to the right of the stripe? Uh, yes. No, well, yes. I think I might do that. There's a double wood. That makes it double difficult. Well, oh, the way that shot. What do we know? Now, the double wood is what, what, what threw me a little bit. He played it perfectly. Played it perfectly. First ball off the head pin, I think, and he only puts four in the spare. So he'll be open in the eighth. Very deliberate bowler. Very methodical. And that will be an eight box. 122 through eight for Mike Yao. And Chris Capozzi working on a double mark, trying to climb back into it. After the 91 half put on the board by Mike Yao, opened up some distance. Chris threw that one away. Just put one in the spare. Come on now, come right back. That one got away come from right him. Back. Come on now. He short-armed that one a little bit, and it went all the way across. Threw a good nice second pin. ball. Nice pin, big ten. Big ten. That hurts. So one pin fill on a spare hurts a lot. And a ten box. 91 through 9. Have results from the WCBC because of the, tamey, uh, the uh, timing of our tapings, unable to give you the March results, but back in February at Bowling Acres, 12th and 13th, their winner for the men with a 13-34 was Stu Bergman, followed by lefty Craig Holbrook. John Zappi was third. Sean Baker, fourth, followed by Glenn Ayres, Chris Sargent. Seventh place went to Jeff Surrett. Mike Poulin and Bob Whitcomb rounding out the top nine. And for the women, Ricky Justice was high, followed by Melissa Casey, Cindy Beatrice, Joanne Rosano, and Cindy Wedlock. Congratulations to all bowlers in the February WCBC tournament. Another 10 box for Chris. He finishes with a 101. He struggled through that for a string. Mike Yao already is at 122 with two boxes remaining. Wow. Right on the head pin, breaks up the split. And a great spare opportunity here for Mike Yao with the two seven pieces of wood in front of both pins. And there's the mark. He's doing to Chris Capozzi what Chris Capozzi did to Mike Morgan last week, and that's out to a big first game. Last week, Chris Capozzi fired a 131 string right out of the box. Mike Yao will exceed that by considerably. He'd like to see that three-pin ball. Boy, it 
tottering. Still, still rolling and halfway over. Won't go. Another spare opportunity. He is, oh, right between the three and the 10. He's at 148. That was a costly miss. That'll be a 10 box and a 150 first string for Mike Yao. And a 49 pin lead over Chris Capozzi as we head to string number two. We continue from Lita Lanes in Nashua with Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Mike Yao ready to bowl. String number two from Lita Lanes in Nashua. Dick Lutz with Mike Morin and our entire crew, our director Kevin LaFond, our engineer Keith Webb, our camera crew of Kristen Doobie, Larry Haber, and Tanya Perry. Chuck Lothrop's on replay. Oh, he missed the shot. That's one he'd like to have back. Rich Brooks on audio. And Kristen Doobie's also handling graphics. As you watch the finest bowlers in the world compete each and every week on Candlepin, Stars and Strikes. I'm going to get some of your cards and letters. Joanne Collins from Wilder, Vermont sent us a note, Mike. Hi, Dick and Mike. Needless to say, I've been meaning to join the Procrastinators Club since about 1976. That's <laughs> We've been enjoying your show since February 2004 when my husband, channel surfing as usual, called out to me that bowling's on. Then he said the magic word, it's Candlepin Bowling. We haven't seen televised Candlepin Bowling since 1987 when they moved north from Warner and lost Don Gillis on Channel 5. Our TV listings do not include our station. But we're working on that. Needless to say, I'll never again yell at my husband for channel surfing. You mentioned that Dan Murphy used to host the show. My husband and I both lived in Concord before we were married, and their first date was bowling at Boutwell's. I'll be darned. That's a great bowling center, and uh, Dan Murphy does a wonderful job. As he did on the bowling show up till uh, 1996 or 5. Yeah. You wonder how many first dates nice were at Candlepin yeah. Bowling over the years. I'll bet there were We would many. love to hear from you. That if you've would, got a, great? Yeah. a first date bowling story, get in touch with us, email, or uh, just snail mail would be fine, too. All right. I'll bet there are some stories out there. Right at it now. Was your first date with your wife? It was a, not Candlepin Bowling. It was not Candlepin Bowling. Monster trucks? No, as a matter of fact, I remember what it was. We were fixed up and we went to see a, a, a Platters concert in New York, Maine. How about that? <laughs> the Platters, no kidding. Yeah. And I guess smoke got in your eyes it that did. night. It did, it sure did. <laughs> it's been foggy ever since. Nice ball. Oh, he almost Good made luck. the shot. Good luck, Chris. I So our thanks to Joanne Collins from Wilder, Vermont, for the note. Do you know he asked a question here, Mike. What was yes. the approximate time range when bowling alleys converted from wooden pins? Well, you know what? I'm probably the wrong guy to ask. As I understand it, much of that took place in the 60s. Again, I wasn't living here. I was back in Michigan. But from people I've spoken to, Somewhere in that range. It's a question we'll put to Ray Simino or Sean Howard or exactly. the staff here at uh, Lita Lanes, yeah. who, by the way, do a great job every every month for our taping and our next taping coming up, the Tournament of Champions. Well, I'm glad you mentioned that because we'd love to have a nice big full house here on April the 5th, Tuesday the 5th. We will tape five shows that day. We'll the start a little earlier that morning. We will. At 9.30 in the morning. If you would like to join us, we'd love to have you with us. They'll have the coffee and donuts out for you. No charge, by the way. Coffee and donuts Unless are on the house. Unless you want to us a few bucks, we're always happy to accept uh, <laughs> honorariums. Hi, Mike. Work it out. Well, there's the uh, Spread Eagle minus the 10 pin for Mike Yao, who incidentally in his off time is a soccer referee for the state of New Hampshire. He referees in traveling leagues, the Super Y League and the Premier League. Mike missed the mark there. The uh, crowd, as you see in the background, another good crowd here for the taping. 
on this final ladder series. Looking for our sixth member in the Tournament of Champions at the end of the season. That'll be an eight box for Mike. So Chris Capozzi with an opening and a chance to narrow the gap. We're going to keep on going with Chris Capozzi here. Chris thought we were going to take a break. He was a couple boxes shy. He looked back here thinking it was break time, but not quite. Only well, feels like you've thrown four boxes, Chris. <laughs> Chris Dowen got away from him again. He's right, he's lost back, the head pin. Right zeroed in as he was last week. He has totally lost it here this afternoon. That's a good second ball. Not enough there, though. Still has the two and the five. And Remember last week we read an email from Julie Altman and her children, including IZ. And you, you said she did reply. Here is the reply. Thanks so much, she says to you, Michael. For the reply, we're thrilled with the hobby. Last night, Izzy asked Dad if uh, Double Decker could babysit. After a few minutes of very funny conversation, Alex realized that Izzy was referring to Mr. Schiffer Decker, who was a bowler here. And is also from Cambridge, incidentally. So the players have a fan club. Well, you got wood. That'll come up, come up, come up. And they do plan to bring them to one of the tapings. So we'd love to see them when they come. Thanks to Julie Altman and family for the email and their interest in Candlepin Bowling. I'll have to save that letter for Joe Schifferdecker if he does get back onto the show. Nice bit. Nice bit. Double Decker, huh? <laughs> He's probably been called worse. Chris right on, and that will be a 10 box. Then we go to the break, and it's Mike Yao in the lead as we continue from Lita Lanes in Nashua with Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Ready to go from Lita Lanes in Nashua, New Hampshire. Candlepin Stars and Strikes, Mike Yao with a 51-pin lead over Chris Capozzi. The roles have been reversed. Last week, Chris Capozzi had the big lead over Mike Morgan, and he finds himself on the short end to Mike Yao making his first appearance on Candlepin Stars and Strikes. And he has been red hot, a 150 first string. And a pretty good ball right there. Oh, looking for the spear. As you watch this for the first time on Sunday the 20th, we hope that all the kids up in Canada from Pilgrim Lanes in Haverhill had a good time and enjoyed themselves. At 8.30 this morning, they hopped on buses and were heading back to uh, be dropped off at Pilgrim Lanes at about 8.30 Sunday evening. That's tonight. Yesterday, they did teams events at uh, 8 in the morning, singles at 11, doubles at 2. That's right. They bowled 13 strings in one day, had dinner at 6, and then the moms and dads found some chaperones and babysitters, and the grown-ups went to the casino and uh, did some gaming action. So it was a fun weekend, and uh, we can't wait to hear all about it. Up in Nova Scotia, the ICYBA Canada trip. Great shot by Mike Yao to convert a very difficult spare. There you see it again. Watch the ball right in the one-two pocket. Converting the spare for Mike Yao. Now Chris Capozzi on lane 34. Again, he threw it past the head pin. He has not been able to find the head pin at all. Anthony Karen from Groton, Mass. is so, sort of an unofficial record keeper for Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Mike, he sent us an email after Chris Sargent's 497. There's a great spare for Chris Capozzi converting the half Worcester. Chris Sargent rolled a 497 a couple of weeks back. And the records that Chris broke with his 497, the, the record since our show began. The highest previously was a 482 by Peter Flynn back in 1985. The record since you and I have been doing the show, 463 by Gary Carrington in 2004. And the 193 first string was the record since we've been doing the show. A high previously, a 190 by Rich Clark in 1999. So Chris Capozzi puts a couple of marks together. That's the slow, long climb back for Chris Capozzi, who now has two marks. One in the fifth, one in the sixth, up against Mike Yao, who has a sixth frame spare. Mike Yao off the head pin that time, puts just two in the mark. Half Worcester for Mike Yao. Chris Capozzi just converted a half Worcester a moment ago. Just to the left of the head pin. Candlepin stars and strikes. 
presented by McMulkin Chevrolet, Nashua Mitsubishi, Nashua Hyundai, and McMulkin Cadillac, all here in the city of Nashua, and by Tri-State Megabucks and the games of the New Hampshire Sweepstakes Commission. And we certainly appreciate their support of Candlepin Stars and Strike over the years, and we're happy to welcome the New England Ford dealers to our roster of Stars and Strike sponsors. And if you'd like information on becoming part of the family, all you have to do is call 603-434-8850 and say, I want to be part of Candlepin Stars and Strikes. And they will be happy to help you out. We'd love to have you with us. Ratings are strong. The loyal following is there. And a nice shot by Mike Yao. And one of the, sorry, Dick, one of the most watched sports programs in New England. I mean, you put, put up the Celtics, or the, well, beating the Bruins this year, from what I can, can see. All of the Celtics the last couple of weeks have come yeah. back into a position of prominence. Antoine's back, and uh, people are talking about it. Yes, they are. I went to a Celtics game a couple of weeks ago, and it was fun. Oh, oh Chris played it well. It's been a long time since it's really been fun to be a Celtics fan. That's a nice 10 box. Nice 10. All right, Chris, come on now. Well, through seven boxes, he's uh, brought back 14 pins onto his side of the uh, scoring column, but he is up against despair from Mike Yao in the eighth box. That's a good first ball. Oh, the five pin still there. I don't know how it's still there. We could see from this angle it was a well-thrown oh. first ball. He was robbed. Yeah. Well, he used the water will he, he go out He's got a little straight. much for He can keep the ball to the right of that pin and be successful like that. He was worried about well, it. I was not. He went in between. Yeah. You're either going to use the water or you're going to go dead on. He went in between, and luckily the ball didn't deflect, and he did take out the five pin. So he matched the Mike Yao spare in the eighth frame. Mike's first ball is right on the head pin. Six, seven, seven pins go down. The five pin moves off spot, which I think helps him a little bit in this situation. It does. Missed the object pin, which was the three pin. He's got the six is gone. The three and five are still there. So an opening for Chris Capozzi to get a little closer. That's a ten box. He is at 96, so he's cooled off after a 150 for a string. $375 goes to the runner-up today, plus whatever accumulated bonus money they have won. And the winner takes on Mark Gregory, who's here. He's the number two seed in the current ladder, the final ladder before the Tournament of Champions, which Good. gets underway in a couple of weeks. Good first ball by Mike Yao there. The seven pin still stands. And he plays the wood and has the spare in the 10th frame. 106 plus the ball. Interesting letter email we got. Thanks for reading my letter about my dad, George Metallius, and his upcoming birthday. He sent me a tape of that show. To answer your question, yes, I am related to Grace Metallius. She was my mother. All of us are from Manchester originally, then moved first to Belmont, then Gilmanton. It still amazes me that people remember Peyton Place after almost 50 years. Keep up the great work on Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Everyone loves the show. Marsha Metallius Dupree. How can anyone forget Peyton Place? Oh, no kidding. And Grace Metallius, the novel that made her famous from Gilmanton Ironworks. And thanks to Marsha Metallius Dupree for writing in. Oh, great first ball by Chris. Puts eight in the mark. No wood, but it's the 6-10, easily made. Mike Yao finished with a 113. He picked the pin. He knew it when it yep. left his hand. He yep. put one finger in the air. That's a 10 box. He's at 111. He could use a mark to eat up some of the deficit that he faced after the first string. That miss just a moment ago was costly. Just 
on the head pin, and look what he's got to show for it. But he's got some wood. The wood can help out. There's really not a lot of choice here. You just got to throw it down and hit that front wood on the red stripe and hope for the best. He played it to the right, and he missed it. Big disappointment for him, who's up against the Mikey Ospare in the 10th. So he'll pick up a few pins. It's a 10 box. It's a 121. He picks up eight pins. He trails by 41 after two. Mike Yao with a 220 uh, with a 263, and Chris Capozzi with a 222. A 41 pin advantage for Yao over Capozzi. As we head to string number three, we continue from Lita Lanes in Nashua with Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Chris Capozzi will be first to bowl in string number three. With some work to do, he trails Mike Yao by 41 pins after two strings. First ball off the head pin, he got a great break and great wood. Well, Chris took advantage of the break and has a mark. Another good first ball and another spare opportunity for Chris. The five and the eight, no wood. He's right there. Two marks in a row to start out. Shot by Mike Yao. That was not easy. Good look at Mike from Londonderry, New Hampshire. Good first ball, a little thin, but he got a great fall. And another spare opportunity. The two pin still stands. Actually loses a pin. Missed it. Missed the single pin spare. So Chris will gain some ground. Got a note here from Joan Connors from Woburn, Massachusetts. Joan, thanks for watching. Thanks for your suggestion. Joan has been bowling and watching bowling on television since 1949. And we love to hear from you, Joan. Thank you very much. Keep on watching Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Curious to see how many entries they get for that. I hope they get a great field. Here's a nice 10 box by Chris Capozzi. Trying to get it through the back door.
put eight in the mark. We go to the break. We have a 42 pin lead from Mike Yao over Chris Capozzi. We continue the lanes in Nashua with Candlepin Stars and Strikes. <laughs> Chris Capozzi ready to bowl on lane 34. Both he and Mike Yao working on marks. That one's off the head pin and he just puts a deuce in it. A collective groan goes up from the audience because Chris showed signs of coming back here against Mike Yao, making an interesting match. Four seven ten remains for a ten box, and that will take some snappy shot to make this. I almost did it. <laughs> Sixty six half, and he's still going to be behind Mike Yao in this string. Right on the head pin that time. Not much to show for it though with the 3-6-10 on the right, a seven on the left, wood in front of the six pin. It's gonna slide that three pin over. Open frame. Not able to slide it across, it's an eight box. Mike Yao on lane 34, right on the head pin. He's working on a spare. He puts six in the mark. Wife is Joanne, married 22 years, son Michael. Sheena's 19, Steven's 17. Punch out. Bowling 40 years at age 48. Mike works in sales support, in sales support engineer for Phillips Medical Systems. And he is in control of this match. Going to have to take on the uh, hot bowler Mark Gregory next week if indeed he does end up winning this match, which it looks like he will. And two weeks from today, Bobby Betancourt. Been a while since we've seen him. So it gets more difficult as you work your way up the ladder. a great shot by Mike Yao. The sneeze didn't bother him. I, I don't know if people could hear that, but what great concentration. Yeah. Somebody sneezed just as he was starting, and the crowd there collectively yelled, God bless you, yeah. and he just went right up and made and that made shot. And made a great shot. Amazing. Totally focused. Here's Chris looking for a strike. <laughs> Someone just faked the sneeze. <laughs> And the spare for Chris Capozzi. Multiple strikes is his only chance to win this. Good first ball. Well, it's a disappointment after a, an amazing 426 triple last week. But he'd make a lot of bonus money, that's for sure. Nine box and a 101 through eight. Mike Yao looking to fill the six box spare. In full command of this match. I'd like to give away some bonus money here. Off the head pin there. Four horsemen on the left. The 10 pin in the right corner. 
Mike Yao will win the high string of the day. That's another $50 in bonus money as well. Four horsemen and a pin over on the other side, and it looked good, but couldn't make it. Ten bucks. Gets a round of applause from his opponent today, Chris Capozzi of Everett, who will leave today with $375. And he had $225 yep. bonus money last week. Two, four, five, no wood. Pretty basic spare. Now, well, if you're going to miss, you might as well miss when you're ahead by 40 pins or so. Ten box. 106. He's added five pins to his lead. He leads by 46 with two boxes remaining. On the head pin that time, but a tough shot remaining. It's the 310. No wood to help out. Two ways to do it, inside or outside. He played it to the outside and got it. Nice shot by Chris Capozzi. Chris moves over to the left side on lane 33. Missed the head pin. Put six in the mark. The one, the two, the seven, and the ten. Got a shot at it. Nope. He is at 125. And a ten box of 127 third string for Chris Capozzi. Three string total of 349 well off of last week's total of 426 Mike Yao bowling out the string right through the opening of the half whistler <laughs> Mike play into the crowd. Big smile on his face. The pressure's off. There's no need for intensity. He puts a seven box. 113. With a box to go. He's already at 376. Well, he could throw a double and get 400 here just to keep things interesting. Pretty good television debut for Mike Yao of Londonderry. He had a double earlier in the match in the first string, a chance for a triple strike. Limping to the finish line, though, Dick. He sure is. <laughs> Almost put it through the opening again. 119. That 150 in the first string carried him a long way. That's going to go right through the middle of six. See you later. Good night. Thanks for coming. <laughs> Third string, a three string total of 382 for Mike Yao to 349 for Chris Capozzi. We come back to talk to the bowlers right after this when we continue from Lita Lanes in Nashville with Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Mike Yao defeats Chris Capozzi, the final score of 382 to 349. Chris Capozzi joins us last week of 426, 349 this week. It's, it's a crazy game, isn't it? It's crazy. I was just, uh, for some reason, on that lane 34 today, I was just pulling the ball to the left constantly. And, you know, then when Mike threw the spare double strike, it's, you know, you've got to catch up. And it's, we talked last week about how it took you a few boxes to get locked onto the head pin, yeah. and then you found it. That you never could find it I today. I couldn't find it today. No, I had a little luck on, uh, on the other lane, but just couldn't find it. You're a pretty busy guy. Of course, you work third shift, which actually gives you opportunities to work with the young kids. I know that you're in a mentoring program. Tell yes. us a bit about that. Uh, I work at the Lafayette School in Everett, and uh, about three days a week, I have uh, the first graders uh, for like four hours, uh, like 8 to 12. I got the preschoolers, 
and I got second grade on Thursday mornings, and it's it's a lot of fun. It's the kids are great, and I have a ball doing it. That's great. It's a great thing for you to do, and we it appreciate is. it. We we'll look forward to seeing you again. Thank you very much, Chris Capozzi. Thank you. Chris. Thank you. Okay. Our Thank guest, you. we have uh, three hundred and seventy-five dollars for being runner-up uh, this afternoon for Chris, and he had some bonus money last week of two hundred and twenty-five dollars. Now we'll go into the bonus ball contest, and Mike will draw a postcard. Boy, that's a big card, huh? This is Ellen Burke from Merrimack, $50 in the bonus ball jackpot, and she wants Mike Yao to knock down eight pins. Mike, let's see if we can get it done. Six. It looks like a six, and that six, it's not going to go. So it will be six. It'll be a consolation prize from NNR Trophies in Winchenden, Massachusetts, for Eileen Burke of Merrimack, Massachusetts. And Mike Yao steps in. For a first time, or you looked like you felt comfortable right away? All the way up to the last two boxes. <laughs> yeah, but it was over by then. No pressure, no big deal. Well, yeah. I, I, once I realized I had one, I kind of laid off a little bit. So i got to ask you about a uh, shot that occurred late in the uh, third game. It was a funny-looking spare combination, and somebody sneezed. And then the whole crowd yelled, God bless you. And at the same, you were just walking up, and it seemed as though you didn't hear a thing. What did you hear, and how focused were you? I was very focused. I really didn't hear the God bless you. I heard the sneeze. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody heard the sneeze, yeah. but it didn't, didn't shake you. You just kept right on going, and, uh, and uh, it didn't seem to affect it, the, the game at all. Not at all. Early on, you knocked out. You, you, you had a real good start. You had uh, a double strike. You had four marks in a row right to start out. Did that settle things down for you when you start off like that? Very much so. Uh, actually, making the 10 was the big thing. Once I made that, I knew I could hit my shots. I had my spot, and it just brought me right down to earth. <laughs> I'm kind of curious. Uh, we've seen your name on the qualifying list many times. You're in the top 10 frequently. You've got to be in the top five. What was different that finally got you on the show this time? Well, a gentleman named Charlie kept telling me it was my first string every string. <laughs> and because everybody kept telling me if I could bowl my first string every string, I'd get on. And I did because he kept telling me it was my first string. And the same thing today with a 150. That's, That's right. First string carried you a long way. You had $75 in bonus money, $50 for having the high string in the match. And we'll see you next week. Thank you. Mike Yao, right. our winner here this see afternoon. You, Thank All you very right. much to Mike Yao, 382 to 349. He defeats Chris Capozzi, and up the ladder we go. Mark Gregory, one of the toughest bowlers ever, will be here next week. And two weeks from today, Bob Betancourt. And we'll look forward to seeing you as well. For Mike Morin and our entire crew, I'm Dick Lutz from Lita Lanes in Nashua. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time on Candleton Stars and Strikes.